Have you ever felt on those days when you don't even want to get out of bed, lacking the spirit to live through the day, unwilling to fulfill your obligations, wondering why we are constantly demanded? Whether in work, family life, or even relationships, we feel trapped as if heavy chains were holding us to the ground. But the question remains, how do I free myself from these chains? What is the secret of those who have managed to escape this life of chaos and disorder? The answer lies in the past, with those who have already overcome all this and left us the secret to deal with all these problems of modern life. In Stoicism, we find the answers from the wisest men who have ever walked the earth. Stay focused until the end of this video and discover how to cope, overcome, and become a new you. Let's get started. Do not focus on what is beyond your control. On a morning like any other, the sun shines with a splendor that challenges the persistent turmoil of the world. Here, in this moment of serenity, we find a space for reflection, a pause in the incessant whirlwind of human existence. It is a fitting moment to contemplate one of the deepest teachings of Stoic philosophy. Do not focus on what is beyond your control. This maxim, as ancient as the whispers of time, carries within it the wisdom of countless generations. Marcus Aurelius, the philosopher emperor, teaches us through his meditations. Accept what happens to you not as something oppressive, but as a natural form the universe uses to shape you. His voice echoes through eternity, reminding us that we are part of a greater whole, subject to the storms and calms of existence. As we walk through life, we often encounter forces beyond our control. The unexpected course of a river, the impetuous direction of the wind, the unpredictable unfolding of worldly events. The anxiety of influencing these external elements can be a source of great suffering. However, Stoicism invites us to a different dance, a movement in harmony with what we cannot change. Imagine for a moment the words of a poet who lived in the shadow of the Stoic masters, Rumi. This place is a dream. Only a sleeper considers it real. This thought, although born from a distinct spiritual tradition, resonates with the essence of Stoicism. Both teach us to look beyond appearances, to see the world not as a battlefield for our desires and aversions, but as a stage for the practice of acceptance and detachment. And how do we practice this acceptance? By understanding that, although we cannot control external events, we have full dominion over our interior, our responses, our emotions, our judgments. Here lies our true freedom. The philosopher Epictetus, with his characteristic insight, stated, It is not things that disturb us, but our interpretation of things. Thus, if we change our perception, we transform our experience of life. The journey to this inner transformation is not a road free of obstacles. It requires the cultivation of self-discipline, profound self-knowledge, and above all, unwavering courage to face ourselves. In this process, we are invited to engage not only with the Stoics, but also with brilliant minds from other traditions. The scientist Carl Sagan, for example, reminds us of our insignificance in the vast cosmos. The universe is not required to be in perfect harmony with human ambition. This reminder of our humble position in the universe can be a balm for the ego, deflating our pretensions of control over the uncontrollable. And so, throughout the day, as the world turns on its indifferent axis, we can find peace in accepting the flow of life. Like a river that meanders through the landscape, adapting to the terrain it traverses, so too can we learn to adapt to circumstances, not through passive resignation, but through an active choice to focus our energy on what truly matters, our attitude, our actions, our inner peace. As this reflective journey comes to a close, the sun sets with the promise of a new dawn, the starry night offers profound silence, an invitation to internalize the lesson. Learned. In the vast theater of the universe, we are at once both spectators and actors, learning the art of navigating life with tranquility, guided by stoic wisdom. True transformation occurs when we accept with gratitude each moment as it is, unveiling the freedom that resides in not focusing on what is beyond our control. Use obstacles as teachers, 
Imagine life as a drawing made on the board by an artist, where obstacles emerge as shadows that, at first glance, seem to cloud the beauty of the picture. However, it is in the presence of these shadows that the true art of life is revealed. Use obstacles as teachers is a principle that transcends time, a stoic echo that resonates in the depths of human experience. In reflection, we can invoke the words of Marcus Aurelius, what stands in the way becomes the way. What impedes action, advances action. The wisdom of this philosopher emperor reminds us that each challenge is a door to self-knowledge, an opportunity to cultivate inner strength. As we navigate the river of life, we often encounter rapids that threaten to divert our course. These moments, though frightening, are invitations to deepen our understanding of the world's impermanent nature. Buddhism with its emphasis on the concept of anika, meaning impermanence, teaches that it is our resistance to change that causes suffering. By embracing obstacles as an integral part of life's flow, we can find serenity. The dialogue between different traditions illuminates our path. Laozi, the wise Taoist, advises, water is fluid, soft, and yielding, but it can wear away rock, which is rigid and cannot yield. As in Tao, it is the soft that overcomes the hard. This metaphor inspires us to adopt flexibility in the face of challenges, allowing them to shape and strengthen us without breaking us. It is in this process of facing and overcoming obstacles that our true nature is revealed. Science, through the voices of figures like Carl Sagan, reminds us of our capacity for wonder and our incessant quest for understanding, even in the face of the unknown. We are a way for the cosmos to know itself, said Sagan. This perspective broadens our view, encouraging us to see obstacles not as barriers, but as crucial steps in the expansion of our consciousness. And what of love, that master which, in its many forms, teaches so much about resilience and vulnerability? Rumi, the mystical poet, wrote, The wound is the place where the light enters you. In our struggles and sufferings, in losses and pains, there is a hidden beauty, a lesson to be learned, growth to be achieved. Faced with obstacles, we are called to dialogue not just with the mind, but with the heart. It is here in this sacred space of introspection that we discover that life's greatest teachers are not found in classrooms or ancient texts, but in lived experiences, in the storms faced and overcome. Reflecting on the journey, we understand that each obstacle is a chapter in our story a fragment of the mosaic that composes our existence. By accepting these challenges as teachers, we open our hearts and minds to growth and transformation. In this process, we not only learn about ourselves, but also about the interconnected nature of all life. True wisdom lies not in avoiding obstacles, but in embracing them with courage and humility. Like the blacksmith who, with the heat of the fire and the strength of the hammer, transforms raw iron into a work of art, so are we shaped by the adversities we face. Each strike, each flame, refines us and brings us closer to our truest essence. And so, along this path, we are constantly reminded that we are not alone. Human solidarity, mutual support in times of challenge, is a powerful force that unites us. In every gesture of compassion and every word of encouragement, we find the strength to continue. At the twilight of our days, when we look back and contemplate the journey traveled, it is in overcoming obstacles that we find our most defining moments. It was not the easy paths, but the challenges ardently overcome that sculpted our character and forged our resilience. Therefore, as we face life's storms, may we remember the words of the wise who came before us and those who walk with us. May each obstacle be seen not as an enemy to be defeated, but as a master come to teach us the art of perseverance, patience, and above all, love. In this great school of life, obstacles are our most rigorous teachers, but also the most generous. They teach us that behind every difficulty lies an opportunity to grow, to evolve, to become wiser and more compassionate versions of ourselves. Thus, as we move forward, let us carry with us the certainty that the wisdom gained in the heart of trials is the light that illuminates the path to a full and meaningful life. Live in the now and not in the past. 
In an infinitely expanding universe where stars are born and die in a cosmic blink, the ephemeral nature of human existence is revealed in its full magnitude. Against this vastness, a truth resonates with stoic clarity. Live in the now and not in the past. This maxim, a beacon for the navigating soul, invites us to anchor in the present, the only time in which life truly unfolds. The now, this fleeting instant, is often eclipsed by shadows of what was or by the uncertain light of what may be. Yet the wise from past eras and enlightened minds of the present teach us the preciousness of each moment. Buddhist monks whose words flow like a serene river remind us, the only way to live is by touching the now. In its simplicity, this teaching embraces a profound truth. The fullness of life is found in the entirety of the present moment. In the tapestry of human history, many have sought wisdom in the yellowed pages of Stoic philosophers. Epictetus, with his penetrating clarity, proclaims, Do not be disturbed by what happens, but give every event the response of a balanced and centered mind. Here, at the heart of Stoicism, lies the key to unveiling the beauty of the now, a balanced mind that remains unshakable amid life's storms. However, attachment to the past is a chain that often binds us, preventing us from experiencing the freedom of the present moment. As Shakespeare, the immortal bard, so eloquently put in his tragedies and comedies, we are often haunted by ghosts of our own thoughts, trapped in a cycle of remorse and longing that obscures the light of the now. And so the question arises, how can we release these chains and truly live in the present? The answer, though simple, requires constant practice, mindfulness. It is an invitation to observe, without judgment, the flow of life, embracing each breath, each heartbeat, as a precious gift. In mindful observation, we discover that each moment is a universe unto itself, filled with infinite possibilities. This journey towards the now is not a solitary path. It is shared with great minds like Carl Sagan, who in contemplating the vastness of the cosmos, reminds us of our fundamental connection to the universe. We are made of star stuff, he says, a reminder that every instant of our existence is a miracle of the cosmos. In a world that often values doing over being, living in the now is a revolutionary act. It is choosing presence over distraction, depth over superficiality. As the poet Rumi teaches us, wherever you are and whatever you do, be in love. Therefore may this text serve as an invitation for you, dear reader, to embrace the fullness of the now. May we shed the shackles of the past, freeing ourselves for the vastness of the present. May each breath remind us of life's ephemerality and the preciousness of every instant. And, in doing so, May we find the true joy and peace that reside in the heart of the present moment. May the wisdom of the Stoics, the depth of the poets and the curiosity of the scientists inspire us to live with full presence, to nurture clear consciousness and to celebrate the miracle of being alive. In the end, the journey towards the now is the journey towards ourselves, a discovery of the pure essence of being, where each moment is an opportunity for self-knowledge, for gratitude, and for love. Thus, as the world continues to spin and the stars shine in the vast night sky, may we find beauty in the simplicity of the now, embracing each moment as a precious gift. For it is in the now that life happens. It is in the now that we are truly free. Self-discipline as a habit. In the magnificent universe we inhabit, where stars shine in harmony with the invisible laws governing them, Self-discipline emerges as the gravitational force that maintains balance in the order of human inner chaos. Self-discipline as a habit is not just a principle, it is the firm foundation upon which a life of purpose, meaning and serenity is built. Since the dawn of consciousness, humans have grappled with the antagonistic forces of desire and duty, an epic battle between the seductive appeal of immediate pleasures and the quiet yet persistent call of reason. Plato, in his allegory of the chariot, presents us with the image of the human soul as a chariot pulled by two horses, one noble and the other untamed, symbolizing this eternal tension. Self-discipline, then, 
is the charioteer guiding these forces in harmony, steering us towards the highest good. In this context, Stoicism, with its emphasis on virtue as the supreme good, offers a compass to navigate the internal storms. Marcus Aurelius, in his moments of reflection between the duties of an emperor and the contemplations of a philosopher, reminds us, you have power over your mind, not external events. Realize this and you will find strength. Herein lies the essence of self-discipline, the recognition that, although we cannot control the winds of fate, we can adjust the sails of our attitudes and actions. In our modern journey, filled with ceaseless distractions and instant gratifications, practicing self-discipline is an even more formidable challenge. Technology, while a tool for connection and knowledge, often lures us away from focus and purpose. In this maze of stimuli, the wisdom of Epictetus resonates with urgency. Freedom is the only worthy goal. It is to control oneself. Contemporary science, with its discoveries about neuroplasticity and habits, echoes the teachings of the ancient philosophers. Psychologist William James, a pioneer in the study of the human mind, stated, self-discipline is the result of a systematic training of self-control. Thus, we understand that self-discipline is not an innate gift, but a skill that can be cultivated, a muscle that strengthens with use. But how can we practically cultivate this essential virtue? The answer lies in the simplicity of daily life, in the decision to rise at the first ring of the alarm, in the conscious choice of foods that nourish the body and mind, in the unwavering dedication to our tasks, even when laziness whispers its temptations. Each act of self-discipline is a brick in the construction of our character's temple. However, it is crucial to recognize that self-discipline does not mean repression or denial of life's pleasures. On the contrary, as Taoism teaches, it is the middle way, a harmony between yin and yang, between doing and being, between action and contemplation. True self-discipline flourishes in the freedom to choose what is essential and beneficial in the long term, over what is merely pleasant at the moment. Therefore, may this principle, self-discipline as a habit, serve not as a burden, but as an invitation to true freedom, a freedom not granted by external circumstances, but achieved through willpower, clarity of purpose, and peace of mind. May we be inspired by Rumi's words. Beyond ideas of right and wrong, there is a field. I'll meet you there. This field is the space of inner freedom, accessible through self-discipline, where the human spirit finds its highest expression. And so, in the quietude of our souls, as we face the daily choices that shape our lives, let us remember that each moment is an opportunity to practice self-discipline, to honor the commitment to ourselves and the greater good. May each decision reflect not just our immediate desires, but also our deep commitment to life's journey. A journey that, though filled with challenges, is equally filled with beauty, meaning and joy. By cultivating self-discipline as a habit, we not only transform our individual lives, but also contribute to the collective well-being. Weaving a tapestry of humanity that reflects the highest ideals of harmony, respect and compassion. May we walk this path together, strengthened by virtue, guided by wisdom, and illuminated by love. Developing Emotional Control Think of yourself as a boat on the ocean of human existence, where waves of emotion oscillate between furious storms and serene calmness. Mastering these turbulent waters presents itself as one of the greatest challenges and, simultaneously, one of the most noble goals to be achieved. Developing emotional control is not just a journey of self-discovery, but an odyssey in search of inner tranquility, a state of being that Stoic philosophers, with their timeless wisdom, aspired to reach. In his reflections, Marcus Aurelius, the philosopher-emperor, offers us a guiding light. The happiness of your life depends upon the quality of your thoughts. Thus, he teaches us that it is not the emotions themselves that disturb our peace, but the interpretation we give them. In other words, emotional control begins in the mind, in the sacred space where thoughts shape our reality. This principle, though rooted in antiquity, resonates with the modern discoveries of psychology and neuroscience. 
it tells us, between stimulus and response, there is a space. In that space lies our power to choose our response. In our response lies our growth and our freedom. It is in this space between feeling and reacting that emotional control nestles, offering us the key to a more fulfilling and balanced existence. But how do we navigate this space? How do we develop the ability to observe our emotions without being swept away by them? The answer lies in the practice of mindfulness, a concept that, while not exclusive to Stoicism, complements its virtues. In Buddhism, with its gentle wisdom we are taught, mindfulness is the energy that allows us to recognize the presence of suffering in order to embrace it with tenderness and understanding. By practicing mindfulness, we cultivate the ability to be fully present with our emotions, recognizing them, welcoming them, but not allowing them to define who we are. In this process, the art of gratitude reveals itself as a powerful ally. Modern science, through studies in positive psychology, has shown that gratitude not only improves our emotional well-being, but also strengthens our resilience in the face of life's adversities. As the poet Rumi whispers through the centuries, the wound is the place where the light enters you. Therefore, even in our deepest pains, we can find reasons to be thankful for it is through them that we grow and transform. The journey toward emotional control is also a practice of release. Laozi, the wise founder of Taoism, reminds us that letting go is the way to attainment. By releasing the chains of emotions that bind us to the past or cast us into future anxieties, we find freedom in the now, a space of power where we truly live and breathe. On this path, it is vital to recognize that emotional control does not mean suppression or denial of feelings. On the contrary, it is about acknowledging them, understanding them and learning from them. As Carl Jung, the Swiss psychiatrist, prophesied, he who looks outside dreams, he who looks inside awakens. It is an invitation to dive into the depths of our being, facing our shadows and lights with equal courage and compassion. And so, Armed with the wisdom of the Stoics, the serenity of the Buddhists, the flexibility of the Taoists, and the insights of modern psychology, we tread the path of emotional control. It is a journey that does not promise a storm-free destination, but it offers us the ability to navigate through them with a tranquil heart and a clear mind. May we then face each day with the determination of Marcus Aurelius, the understanding of Thich Nhat Hanh, the resilience of Viktor Frankl, and the gratitude of Rumi. May every emotion be a teacher, every challenge a lesson, and every moment an opportunity to grow. For in the end, it is in the harmony of our inner world that we discover true peace, a peace not disturbed by external storms, but that shines like a beacon, guiding us through the dark night towards the dawn of a new day, filled with possibilities, wisdom, and love. Do not be bothered by what others think. In today's world, where opinions from various people, known or unknown, are constantly aimed at you, finding refuge in the quietude of one's own mind is a skill that sages from past and present eras have mastered. Do not be bothered by what others think is not just a maxim for navigating life. It is an invitation to freedom an open door to authenticity and inner peace. The wisdom of this premise finds its roots in the heart of Stoicism, where philosophers like Epictetus remind us, if you worry about what others think of you, then you will always be their prisoner. This powerful statement not only highlights the futility of seeking external approval, but also encourages us to claim our emotional and intellectual independence. But how do we break free from this prison? How do we find the strength to be truly ourselves in a world that constantly pushes us to be something we are not? The answer lies in the practice of introspection and the courage to live according to our own values, even when they go against the current. On the path to authenticity, we find allies in traditions and thinkers from different eras and cultures. Laozi, with the serenity of Taoism, whispers through time, care about the opinion of others leads to unrest. Simplicity brings serenity. This teaching underscores the importance of finding contentment and peace in the simplicity of being who we truly are, without adornments or pretensions. 
As we navigate the waters of life, we are often confronted with the judgment of others. However, as Rumi, the Sufi poet, teaches us, dance when you're broken open, dance if you've torn the bandage off, dance in the middle of the fight, dance in your blood, dance when you're perfectly free. This is a metaphor for the freedom that comes from accepting and celebrating our own existence, regardless of approval or judgment from others. Modern science, with its studies on the psychology of happiness and well-being, reaffirms that self-acceptance is one of the pillars of true happiness. As Carl Sagan reminds us, somewhere, something incredible is waiting to be known. This something incredible might very well be the discovery of our own essence, free from the chains of external judgment. Therefore, may we walk with the wisdom of the Stoics, the serenity of the Taoists, the passion of the poets, and the curiosity of the scientists. May we find the courage to live authentically, celebrating our uniqueness and embracing our freedom. May the concern about what others think dissolve in the recognition that the only truly important opinion is the one we have about ourselves. Thus, at the end of this journey, before the mirror of life, may we look into the eyes of our own soul and find not the reflection of others' expectations but the bright light of our true essence. And in this revelation, may we find peace, freedom, and the joy of simply being who we are, freely, completely, authentically. My name is Hugo, and this was my contribution. If this content has helped you in any way, then don't waste time. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and if you have something to share with us, write your opinion in the comments. And if you have nothing to write, simply say, I am here. See you next time.